This is the Impulsive Thinker Podcast, a show for high-achieving ADHD entrepreneurs. Together, we will inform and educate you about how to improve your self-awareness while developing systems, routines, and habits for conquering the entrepreneurial world. Here is your host, Andre Brisson. Hey there, it's Andre the Impulsive Thinker. Uh, this week we're talking with Nick Sonnenberg, who wrote a fantastic book called Come Up for Air, How Teams Can Leverage Systems and Tools to Stop Drowning in Work. And I thought it was a fantastic book. It gave me a lot of clarity, and in certain ways it gave me permission to not look for things that I was looking for for 10 years. I was very adamant and very strict on myself that I needed to find one software that can do it all for my engineering company. The time management of it, the tracking of time for projects and project expenses, um, work management, how to do to do the projects, tracking, scheduling, um, even the project management side, which has had to do with the project costing expenses, our CRM, the quoting, one beautiful package so I didn't have to jump around between apps. In the old days, jumping between apps was a problem. It was challenging. It was frustrating. They didn't really talk to each other. So I got a rigid mindset about I am not going to do multiple things. I also looked at multiple monthly fees. I thought it just adds up in the end. It's just pain in the butt. You got to work and change and blah, blah, blah. But after reading this book, I'm going to quickly go over the CPR concept or model that he has or framework is, sorry, he, uh, I'm sorry, Nick, I, 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 I botched that for you, but the CPR framework, you know, C is for communication, P is for planning, and R is for resources. And if you control those three things and use the technology and applications with simple rules around those three frameworks or letters, then you can really increase your team efficiency and leverage those systems so that your team can stop doing annoying, repetitive stuff that costs no money. Or again, I like his term here, reducing the scavenger hunt, making everything easy to retrieve and not have the scavenger hunt. And I never realized that I never had that phrase, phraseology for me, but that's actually how I managed my undiagnosed ADHD for the longest time. I always spent more time putting things in certain places so I know how to easily get them. So I was really, one of my key um, strategies to overcoming my symptoms of not forgetting or losing things because it's uh, out of sight or time blindness was I was making things for ease of retrieval. And a lot of people, especially neurotypicals, they resist that. Well, why am I going to spend five minutes now when I can find it later, or someone else, because it's not my problem because someone else needs it, um, it saves a lot of time down the road. So instead of having 10 different people looking for something for five minutes, you spend that extra five minutes and then they can find it in two. Huge, huge thing. And I really like that scavenger hunt problem, or the scavenger hunt reference. And I really like that, it's very important. So the CPR model, made sense to me and it actually gave me permission actually tell me to stop being rigid and not thinking about getting the one software and to use different apps or applications or soft softwares and i'm like why why would you do that andre okay since you ask i'll i'll let you know and the thing is i put i read the cpr book i looked at the framework then honestly, right beside it, I had my ADHD structure model uh, rough draft right beside it. And I'm like, right at the top of the ADHD structure model is environment. Environment. I'm preaching that you should have an environment for specific things, an environment for work, an environment for leisure, an environment for home, an environment for creation. Because once you get into those environments, your brain's going, I know what I'm supposed to do, and that's all I'm going to do because there's no other tasks are outside the purpose of this environment for me to work on. And I'm like, man, stupid dumbass. Like, why didn't you think about this 10 years ago and stop trying to search for this one software? Because I kept running into that those softwares are extremely expensive meant for the bigger engineering firms, which is fair, but they were so convoluted and complicated that 
We would have spent more time entering information and chasing information there than if we were just keep doing it the way we're doing it manually and uh, poorly with Outlook and SharePoint and all that. So environment control helps us stay in our lane with simple rules, okay? And then I'm looking at it, goes, but the one app for all things, quoting all things project management, work management, bookkeeping, internal comms, and a wiki, huh, those are all different environments. I saw those in environments now. So a task or, like, let's take quoting. I'm now going to get everything related to quoting in this one software because we can do emails in there that can actually talk to our Outlook. So any emails that's going through there can be copied into our Outlook so that we can store it there. But that means if I'm in the quoting environment and quoting energy, I can be in that one software where I can do the emails. If I got to reply, hey, customer wants, you know, I got to go follow up on the email. Did they reply? It's in there. Anything related to quoting is in there. We'll, we'll set up the quote in there. We'll send the quote from there. The, the automatic signing can be done and sent back to that. And then since now everything's a lot can communicate, all softwares can communicate to each other better. Now we can do that. So if I'm going to quote, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to only do that. That's where I'm going to communicate to the email, uh, to the customer. So all those emails that are receiving technically will be sent through the Outlook, but we'll set up the Outlook that those emails just gets automatically filed and never in that person's inbox. Because the rule we have now, according to the CPR model, is emails, Outlook is only used for external communication only. And now we're going to add the rule not for quoting. Because we can actually have a quote sitting or an accepted proposal in our inbox and lose track of it and then start too late. But now it will be in this one software that it's received because of an electronic signature, which will notify administration that we got a new work order. Now we don't have to rely on the team member to receive that email, to send the information for the quote or for the work order and move. So we're in that environment. Same thing with our, our, um, our work management system where all the planning and the tasks to be done are in that one system but any communication regarding the project is done there, not through our internal communication that's not project related or through emails. So if we're in the environment to work on a project and to plan and work within the project and communicate the project, now we've got the one app. And all it's doing is just getting that one environment concept together. And that prevents, you know, you know in the ADHD brain, if I switch from here to there to go there, you know, how easily distracted are we going to go down some sort of rabbit hole? But if I now am only working in one application to do just that and I don't need to go somewhere else to get something, like all the files would be saved there too. That reduces our ability to be distracted and go down rabbit holes. And that goes for our neurotypical team. Okay. Allows ourselves to focus better and stick on the purpose and, you know, reduces distractions or rabbit holes. So I highly recommend that you buy and read Nick's book. It's called Come Up For Air, How Teams Can Leverage Systems and Tools to Stop Drowning in Work. And I'll tell you, it's so well written. It's simple. It's thick. But it's such a simplified explanation on how to do things. And it's very well written. It's not completely law losing yourself technical it makes a lot of sense. And then give it to a team member that is very good at creating processes and systems and say, here, boom, read this, read that, and let's make this team more efficient by leveraging the systems that we have. Or it gave me a lot of direction what to look for in systems, especially the wiki. And it's, it's really good. And I'll tell you right now, just by implementing Teams immediately, and then finally get our work management system in place. So the rule is, who are we communicating to? A customer? That's external. Outlook. Are we talking to each other? Yes, that's internal. Is it project related? No, that's teams. Is it project related? Yes, that's the work management system. So all the communication about the project stays within the project. That's reduced our emails by a minimum 60% within three weeks, and it's increasing 
more and more as we're starting to. So once we actually move the emails, you know, our quoting into that other software, I guarantee we don't have to look at emails. Uh, we could probably get away with looking at emails every two days. So buy the book. Let me know what you think about it. And thanks again for listening. Hey, it's me. Is your workspace overwhelming, full of distractions, hard to focus? Some people call it a mess. Well, I can help. Go to tacticalbts.com front slash ADHD safe workspace and learn about my new course, the ADHD safe workspace, where I will help you regain control of your workspace and reduce your overwhelm and increase your focus. Again, tacticalbts.com front slash ADHD safe workspace. Check it out. Thank you for listening to the Impulsive Thinker podcast. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion for the show, please visit theimpulsivethinker.com. The Impulsive Thinker podcast is produced by Tactical Breakthroughs and hosted by Andre Brisson. Remember, ADHD is only a part of you, not all of you. 